Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at at least five hidden gems inside Adobe Lightroom 5. And the reason I say at least five because I'm probably going to show you a couple extra ones. So uh, Lightroom 5 has some great new features and of course some of these hidden gems are new to Lightroom 5. But I'm going to show you a few that were just ex in existing versions of Lightroom that again are hidden gems that people just sometimes don't realize are there or how to take advantage of. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll show you which ones are in Lightroom 5 and of course which ones were in previous versions. So the first one uh, is actually new to Lightroom 5 and it's the way that, or the change in the, the way the F key works, full screen, F. So that's a new feature actually. When I hit the letter F now in Lightroom 5, it actually takes my image full screen, gets rid of the interface completely and makes the image as large as my display. Now, this is cool, but what if you wanna do things while you're in full screen? So here's another kind of bonus hidden gem. While you're here, you can hit the letter P on your keyboard to mark that as a pick. You'll notice in the lower left-hand corner of the image uh, or the screen, you'll see that the pick has been uh, added there. If I hit the letter U to unflag it, it's unflagged. If I hit the letter X to exit out, it's now uh, rejected. And if again, if I hit the letter P, it goes back to a pick flag. Well, you're not limited to that. So if I wanted to make this a four star image or a five star image, I can just type the number four or five or three or two on my keyboard, as well as uh, the color label. So if I wanted to mark this, for example, a green, I hit the number eight. If I wanted to mark it blue, I hit the number nine, so forth and so on. So you have, uh, you're still have your selection capabilities while you're in full screen. So if I hit the letter F again, that takes me out of full screen. But what about the way the F key used to work? The, the way the F key used to work in Lightroom 4 on down was it would actually change the way the interface looked. So now that's turned into Shift F. If I do Shift F, that gets rid of the uh, window bar. If I do Shift F again, that gets rid of the menu bar. And if I do Shift F again, it toggles me back to showing all both of those. So it, basically the Shift F is now toggling through those three modes, whereas the F key is now full screen. So that's your first hidden gem. The second hidden gem is one that I get all the time. You'll notice that these images came in as uh, NEF files. And if I do an import, and let's go out to my hard drive here, and let's go grab a folder with some images in it. Well, I have some raw files, and if I bring those in, I do have the ability to copy them as DNG, especially if I'm doing it off my memory card. Uh, and I also have the ability now in Lightroom 5 to build smart previews, and I almost always do that now upon import. And we'll talk about smart previews in a minute. But the question I get is what happens if you forgot to do it or you wanted to do it after the fact or you want to do it with images that have been in Lightroom for a long time? You want to either build smart previews or convert to DNG. So here's a hidden gem. The first one is not new and that is if I select all and I go up to my library menu, I have the ability to convert photos to DNG. So this will uh, give me the ability to convert these photos to DNG and it will do it the smart way. It'll get rid of the old ones after the fact and it will convert to DNG and make them lossy. And so or, or, uh, if I wanted to use lossy compression, I could, but basically these will be the exact same quality of the raw original raw files, getting rid of the XMP files. It will basically just make a nice clean conversion for me. And that will happen in place. So these will just convert to DNG um, one after another as it makes the conversion. So that's great that I can do that while in Lightroom without having to um, re-import or do anything weird. It's just replacing those original uh, proprietary RAW files, whether they're Nikon, Canon, Fuji, whatever, with the uh, non-proprietary DNG conversion. So I get some nice clean uh, RAW files that will work cross-platform and in the future, even if these companies decide to stop making raw, their raw format or change their raw format, my DNGs are safe. All right, so that's the first one. Now the second one is, what if I want to make smart previews? This is new in Lightroom 5. If I go to my library menu, there is now a previews, build smart previews option after the fact. So if you didn't do it upon import, you still have the ability to do it now. Now, why smart previews? Well, you'll notice that here, if I deselect, if I can grab one of these quick enough, this just says original photo. But in a moment, when it makes that uh, smart preview, it'll say original photo plus smart preview. And what that does, and it just did it, 
uh, that now gives me the ability that if I decide to work offline, meaning take my computer with me and these images are on a hard drive that I leave behind, I'll still be able to do all my develop options, my exporting options. I'll have most of Lightroom's abilities with me, even though I don't have the original files with me. And when I reconnect that drive, it'll make all the changes to the original files. So I'll be able to do just about everything I can do in Lightroom. Uh, without having to have the original files with me at all times. So smart previews are great. I use them regularly now. All right, so next one, let's go back up here. And we're going to go up to our view menu. And on the view menu, we have this, uh, actually, let's go to loop view first. We have this uh, ability to go in and do a grid. Uh, and now if you uh, hold down your command or control key on Windows, uh, this will give me the ability to change the grid so I can scrub it. I can make it and this is great for when you're trying to recompose the image, make sure the horizon's straight, uh, doing all kinds of cool things. I can also change the opacity of the grid. I'm just scrubbing these uh, sliders left and right with my mouse while I hold down the command key. When I let go of the command key, those options go away. So I have under the view menu, I have the ability to um, turn that grid on and off as well as work with the guide. So same thing, if I hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows, I can move or reposition the guide around. And again, if I don't want those options, I can turn them off at any given time uh, right here from my view loop view loop overlay in the view menu. All right, so that was your uh, third hidden gem. Your fourth hidden gem has to do with smart collections. And smart collections are, I use them all the time. They're really cool. And you got some new options now in smart collections. So when I go to collections, create smart collection, this is where you can tell Lightroom to build a collection based on criteria. So for example, I want to uh, create one called Seattle Shots. So these are all the pictures I took in Seattle. However, uh, let's look at some of the new options. Uh, first one is color. We can now search or create a smart collection based on bit depth. So show me my 8-bit images versus my 16 versus my 32. Or show the various color modes or color profiles. I can also do um, size. So for example, show me all my images that are specific size or resolution. So this is, or aspect ratio. Show me all the ones that are uh, landscape images versus portrait images or square images. So it's pretty cool to create a collection based on these. I'm going to do one based on location and state. So I've already got Seattle keyed in. And when I click create, it's going to be empty because even though these shots above were taken in Seattle, Lightroom doesn't know that they were taken in Seattle. So I'm going to teach Lightroom where these shots were taken by another bonus hidden gem heading over to the map module where I paste it in the address, I'm just gonna hit return so it searches and finds that address here in the maps. And there's my nice bay view that, that I was looking at. And I'm now gonna select these images. I'm just gonna drag them in. Here, select them all. These are the images that I took out, out of the window. I'm just gonna go ahead, or on the patio, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag them to that location. And it will not only add them to that location, but it will do a reverse lookup where it puts in the Seattle city, state Washington, and actually uh, I need to change my collection because I might have done state versus city, uh, but let's go back and take a look at that. And of course, if I go back to that smart collection, uh, I can't remember what I put in there, but let's go ahead and take a look. Yep, Seattle shots, I need to edit that because I think I picked the wrong thing. State and province versus we want, uh, we want city, not state and province. There we go, city of Seattle. Click uh, select and now it grabbed the 10 images. So as I add more images that were taken in Seattle as the city, it will go ahead and add those to this collection automatically. So that's your smart collection ability. Now you have new options to make your collections even smarter. So I can say, show me all the ones that were taken in Seattle and San Francisco and um, New York. I can you know build my smart collections any way that I want. And now I have more criteria to do that. All right, your next one is kind of cool, and that is uh, just a change that people often go un or often goes unnoticed from people that are using Lightroom because you just didn't realize you had the option now, and that is uh, your new, new target collection cap or target capabilities for your collections. So before Lightroom always sent um, anything you targeted to the quick collection. So if I target this image, 
it shows up in the quick collection. If I go to another folder and target another image, it shows up in the quick collection. So, um, and you can do that from the keyboard by hitting the letter B as in Bravo. So those three images are now in the smart collection because I targeted them that way. And of course, if I select them and hit the letter B again, that takes them out of the quick collection. Well, what if you wanted to set up your own collection uh, to target images too? So for example, let's say that I go down here and I go to my demo content and I want my images that I target to go in my collection, not the quick collection. Well, if I right click on this, I can now say set as target collection and that's the hidden gem. So now if I go to any other collection or folder or anything else and I say, you know what? I would love, you know, I'd love to just do these from a keyboard shortcut instead of having to scroll up and down and drag them. I want this one, this one, this one in my, uh, in my demo content collection. So I hit the letter B, it's now added them to that collection. So I targeted my own collection uh, that I can, again, use at any given time to add images to a collection just by hitting the letter B of my choice. So setting that as the target collection. So those are five hidden gems. We're not gonna stop there. I'm gonna give you a couple more. So let's, uh, first of all, this is the one that, is, again, it's not new in Lightroom, but this is the one that comes up all the time. I'm done with the Seattle folder. It's on my hard drive. I want to move it to this external hard drive or server or NAS or something on my network. In other words, I want to get them off my laptop hard drive, which has limited space, and put them on another more permanent storage area somewhere else. So people always screw themselves up by trying to go do that by moving the folder in the operating system. And yes, you can do it, but then you have to come back to Lightroom and reconcile it. You have to tell Lightroom, okay, I've moved these images, now they're over here, and it's just more steps and more work than letting Lightroom do it for you. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this external hard drive and we're just gonna go ahead and plug it into the computer. So I just plugged in the Thunderbolt cable here. There we go. I see the drive lighting up, firing up here. And now if we go out to the operating system, we'll know that, that we'll see that that drive's been there or at it. So it's on the desktop now, it has nothing in it. And Lightroom doesn't know anything about that drive because it never used that drive before. It never had any images on that drive to manage. What I now want to do is take that Seattle 2013 folder and move it to this drive, but I want Lightroom to do it and Lightroom to manage it. So what I'm going to do is, here's your hidden gem. I'm going to go up to the folders area and I'm going to add a folder. So add a folder. And it's going to ask me, where do you want to add this folder? I want to add it on that new hard drive I just plugged in, and I'm going to call this uh, new folder uh, external, you can call it whatever you want, external pictures, uh, or pictures, or hey, extra storage, or whatever you want to call that folder. Now that I've done that and chosen it, Lightroom now knows about that drive, and it knows about that folder. There it is. It's added it, even though there's nothing in it. And here's the beauty of it now, is I can take those images that were on my hard disk, my internal hard disk, and just simply move them to that new folder and Lightroom will manage the process. It's physically moving them from one drive to the next and more importantly, it now knows where they are. So it kept track of it. So if I go out to the hard drive, there they are. There's the folder I created, there's the folder that Lightroom created, there's the DNGs, it did all the work for me without me having to go try and manage it in the, in the operating system and then having to reconcile it. So that's your sixth hidden gem, your bonus one. And here's your seventh one, and this is really kind of hidden. And that is, if you are a Creative Cloud member, you now get to take advantage of Lightroom Mobile. So for example, I've got Lightroom open here, and here's the hidden gem, is that if you hover over your identity plate area, you now get a menu, and that menu, allows me to sync or sign in uh, to Lightroom Mobile and have it sync with Lightroom Mobile, as well as change my identity plate. That's where that option went to. So now that I've synced with Lightroom Mobile, I can go in and sync any of my collections just by going in and adding a little uh, tick mark or check mark here 
on the right hand si or left hand side, uh, the ones with the little lightning bolt or sync bolt, meaning that those are syncing to Lightroom Mobile. If I go in and just enable one, it will sync those images to Lightroom Mobile and it will build smart previews to do that. So in other words, it's not syncing up the raw files, it's actually syncing the um, smart previews to the cloud and then down to your mobile devices or to Lightroom on the web. And that's a hidden uh, gem as well. So for example, if I go to my fashion portfolio, my fashion portfolio and here I'll fire up my iPad in the background here. So you'll see that same portfolio. And if I tap on it, I've got access to the same images here now in Lightroom. I didn't have to tell it to do anything. I didn't have to hit any kind of buttons other than simply enabling that collection to sync to Lightroom Mobile. If I go in and drill down on an image, I can uh, tap uh, with, uh, here we go, we we'll tap with two fingers to turn off the display. We tap with two fingers again to bring up the display. We can tap with two fingers again to kind of uh, bring up the histogram. Tap with two fingers again to turn it all off. I can double tap to bring the image up so I can get a better view of it. Double tap again to bring the image down. I also have the ability, of course, to swipe up to make it a pick, swipe down to unflag it, or swipe down again to reject it. So I've got all of these uh, gestures to go in and review my images uh, by swiping left to right, and again, marking images as picked, so forth and so on. And that will sync back to Lightroom desktop automatically. So that is your, uh, I don't know, sixth or seventh hidden gem. I think it was the seventh one. Now, if I switch back to uh, Lightroom here, and we go, uh, let's see, which one was I in? I wasn't in the fashion one. I think I was in the landscapes one. So let's go to the landscapes uh, portfolio here. And in the landscapes portfolio, there are my picks just came in just as I did them on Lightroom. So I didn't have, again, I didn't have to hit any buttons. I didn't have to do anything extra. It just did that in the background. And again, as a bonus, if we head to our browser, here is Lightroom um, on, the, on the web. So lightroom.adobe.com. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. Once I've signed in, my same uh, portfolios or galleries show up. And so for example, if I go to that same landscapes uh, view, I will see the same images. So I can say, show me the ones that were uh, picks. And again, I get the same pick flags uh, that I did while I was out on the iPad or in Lightroom desktop. So I have the ability also to share this gallery, view a slideshow, so forth and so on. So that's another hidden gem is that Lightroom is also, if you're a Creative Cloud member, you have your access to your Lightroom uh, collections in any web browser. So that's it for this uh, quick video on five or more hidden gems in Lightroom 5. Hope you got something out of it and we'll catch you next time.